Hello again, welcome back everybody. Liquor Hound with you. Thank you for joining me for this next video. Uh, today we're going to be doing clear corn based spirits, uh, moonshine, some people call it shine, white dog, white lightning, uh, liquor. Uh, really doesn't matter what you call it. It is the base spirit for any and all bourbon. Okay, All these are going to start with 51% corn or more. Uh, some of them have little designators as in corn whiskey on the label. Uh, this one's called uh, Original Moonshine Clear Corn Whiskey. All that means, if it says corn whiskey on it, is that it has to have at least 80% corn or more in the mash bill. Uh, another little fact is if it has the word whiskey on it, as in this Death Door White Whiskey, all that simply means is that it was put into a barrel for at least 72 hours. Now, three days is not going to be enough time for it to actually pick up any of the nuances of the barrel or anything like that, but it does make it legal for them to call it whiskey. Now, as you can tell, this is going to be a tasting. I'm going to give you some nosing notes and some tasting notes, and hopefully I can steer you in the right direction and point out which ones are really strong and which ones are fairly smooth. Uh, it depends on your palate and what you're going to like. Uh, but there are no tasting glasses, and the reason is, is because typically moonshine is very, very high proof stuff. The real stuff coming off the stills in the hills is coming off at about 120 to 180 proof. Uh, that is tremendously strong. So luckily for us, uh, they know, uh, you know we city slickers can't handle real moonshine, so they water down the commercial versions for us. Uh, matter of fact, some of them are watered all the way down to 80 proof, which I do not personally approve of. I think if you're going to taste and drink moonshine, you should go ahead and hit it at at least 90 proof. Uh, anything below that, it starts getting soft, you know, and I'm like, moonshine, it's not soft. Uh, even Buffalo Trace, this little bitty guy here on the very front, on the end, you know, Buffalo Trace creates some of the best bourbons ever. And uh, Antique Collection and all these other fantastic stuff. You know, that is a very, very potent white dog over there. And, uh, but it is good to be able to see where they come from, you know, and you can kind of, it's amazing how from that, when you taste that, to taste, you know, um, the Eagle Rare 17 or whatever, and you see how, bang, you know, how did it get there? It's amazing what the barrel influence really has in these spirits. So again, since these are so high proof, I could not do a tasting and, and be any good to y'all. By the time we got to the last third of these, I'd be useless. Uh, so I went ahead and busted them down into like three or four a night over the last few days. And I took down my little notes, which I have right here in front of me. And I'm going to go ahead and go through them and, and talk about them with you. So we're going to start right there with that little guy, Buffalo Trace. It's actually called the White Dog Mash Number 1. And it comes out of Kentucky. 125 proof, as I mentioned. Uh, the base spirits, are, space grains, are going to be 51% corn, uh, rye, and barley. On the nose, I got sweet corn, oatmeal, and raisins. Now, I wasn't expecting the oatmeal and raisins. Uh, most of the time in these... Uh, white corn spirits, you're going to get just corn, big corn, fresh corn. Um, you know, occasionally you'll get some fruits, but not very many. On that one, it was really surprising the nose from the taste, because they were pretty, I mean, they had some similarities, but the, when I went to taste it, you know, here I am thinking, ah, oh, sweet corn, oatmeal, and raisins, it's going to be great. Taste it, bang, that rye is right up front in your face. Uh, just big and bold rye, very spicy. Uh, the oatmeal and raisins kind of come on towards the middle along with the lingering corn and that really lasts throughout the finish. So the spice comes on really strong, really hot up in the front and then tapers uh, throughout. Next, this Cat Daddy um, Carolina Moonshine. That one was a big surprise to me because it's coming out of North Carolina as mentioned. It's created at Piedmont Distillery, so that's the same one that does Midnight Moon here. I thought it was going to be just like the rest of these, clear corn whiskey, until I poured it. When I poured it, it came out, it was pouring very syrupy, and I was like, ooh, what is this about? And sure enough, I go to nose it and taste it, syrupy sweet, okay? Uh, the nose is full of nutmeg, think eggnog, that's what it, it smells like. And I remember reading in some article about it that they're like, no, there's no nutmeg in it. it smells identical to nutmeg. Uh, the other thing that kind of turned me off to it was, if you read down at the very bottom, it has natural and artificial flavors. 
I don't think you need to be adding artificial flavors to anything in here. Um, again, I mean, it's good marketing. It looks like moonshine, but it's not. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. As far as um, the taste on that one, I have syrupy, sweet, cinnamon, allspice, and a hint of peach on the finish. Now, next to it, we have a, a more of a realistic player here. It's called Death's Door, uh, white whiskey coming out of Wisconsin. Uh, that one is using 80% locally grown red winter wheat and 20% barley. <clears throat> Actually comes out at 80 proof. And on the nose, I got dried fruits and raisins. Uh, of course, you know, you always get that little hint of corn in there, but it wasn't really predominant in this one. Uh, one other little interesting note on this one that most of these don't do is they actually rest that spirit. So they take that after it comes off the steel, they water it down, and then they take that, put it in stainless steel vats, and let it oxidize. <clears throat> now, of course, most of the time you're going to try and keep your spirits from oxidizing, but in this case, it comes off so strong that the oxidation actually uh, helps it mellow out and uh, smooth. And it did a really good job because on the taste on that one, I have it listed as mild and smooth, raisins and dried fruit notes, with a maltiness in the background. Very, very nice stuff. Comes off price around $30 or so. And that's worth it. Shine On Georgia Moon. Now this one's been around a really, really long time. Comes in a nice little mason jar. Now when I say a really long time, I think it's been in my area for about five years. So it was really ahead of the curve on this whole uh, white dog moonshine trend that's uh, really peaking right now. Um, it's actually this one is 100% corn. It's coming out of Kentucky. Uh, very very simple stuff. It's inexpensive. It's only about 13 to 15 dollars. <clears throat> uh, but the nose is just oatmeal and corn mash. Big time corn mash. Taste identical. Uh, the only thing that I noticed was it was really fairly mild on the intro, and then as the alcohol starts ramping up really fast by mid palate it's going on strong then it fades rather quickly into the base corn that's you know running that's the theme running throughout that one all the whole way so if you want to get a, a corn whiskey and and just kind of see what they taste like and don't want to spend a lot you can go this route it's just not as smooth as uh, let's say this next guy this is junior johnson's midnight moon and junior johnson's a legendary nascar racer his family is a, comes from a family of moonshiners and bootleggers. Matter of fact, that's how he got his NASCAR start. And so uh, the recipe is actually really, really nice. <clears throat> Again, North Carolina, Piedmont Distillery. Uh, on that one, I have uh, it listed as the grain is corn and barley. And it is on the nose, mild alcohol and light corn. Taste smooth and clean, a touch of mildly sweet corn, and a hint of vanilla. I really, really enjoy this one. Only about $20. This one's very clean, very nice. Uh, fairly, really, well, nicely soft. So if you have a, a sensitive palate, you could definitely go this route. Now, they're also doing a bunch of flavored type spirits. This happens to be called apple pie. It has a little cinnamon stick in there. And apple pie kind of goes hand in hand with traditional moonshine. You know, when you have the shine coming off the steel at 120, 140 proof, it's, you know, it's really, really stout. So what they do is you would take a jug and fill it halfway up with moonshine, uh, top it off with apple juice, and then uh, you throw in some spices, cinnamon stick or two, and you let that sit for just a little bit. And bang, it's really palatable, easy to drink, and it'll get the job done. Um, they actually do a few other flavorings. They do one that's crammed full of fresh strawberries. Uh, they have one that's fresh blueberries, uh, cherries, and they also have a new one that's cranberries. I don't have those yet. Uh, you know, if you want to try those, uh, feel free because they're turning out really nice stuff. Uh, this one, Old Smoky Tennessee Moonshine Cherries, uh, was actually kind of high in price, about $20-$25. Uh, packed full of cherries. The thing that was unusual about that one was I was thinking that the cherries, you know, since they're already full of juice when they go in, 
I wasn't expecting them to absorb that much of the shine. Ooh wee. Uh, you know, they're filling this with 100 proof stuff. It's almost as if the cherries uh, release the juice right away and absorb the shine. Because the liquid that's in there now is very cherry flavored. But those cherries, uh, they're not cherry flavored. Those things are full of just, just about pure moonshine. Uh, again, kind of a neat thing. Interesting to taste, so probably worth adding if you're, if you're interested. Now, if you do have a really sensitive palate, and corn whiskey is, you know, you taste it and you're like, ugh, it's not my thing, then you might want to head this next route. It's uh, McCormick's Platte Valley uh, Corn Whiskey. The thing about this one is, is that um, McCormick is actually based in uh, Missouri, okay? But the spirit that's in here is distilled by Heaven Hill coming out of Kentucky. So, on the actual jug itself, it says at the bottom, uh, Weston, Missouri. Um, I don't know, you know. That's just what I read about the Heaven Hill. I guess that's what the... I, I don't know. That's just what they do. Uh, but it is aged three years in the barrel. So, that really gives it time to uh, turn into like a baby bourbon, you know. Really starts getting a little bit of that vanilla and oak flavor. Matter of fact, on the nose on that one... I said very nice, sweet oak, almost cedar, vanilla, and fresh corn. Uh, the taste is light corn with some yeast and some oak notes with a nice vanilla lingering through the finish. Okay. Again, it's not bourbon. Uh, it's nowhere near that smooth or that clean, uh, but very, very uh, interesting stuff. Next to that, we have uh, Pritchard's Lincoln County Lightning coming out of Tennessee. Uh, 90 proof. Pritchard does excellent uh, bourbon, by the way, so I was really interested to taste his uh, base spirit. Uh, it's using white corn as the base grain. Uh, the nose is corn and earth notes, and I was like, I was trying to figure out the earth notes. How could I explain that a little better? I really couldn't come up with it. I think it has to do with the white corn versus the typical yellow. Uh, but on the taste, I have it listed as uh, medium light and alcohol, smooth, Fresh corn with some honey, but the earthiness lingers in the background, so, you know, it's almost like tones of the soil, you know. Not bad. Pretty good stuff. Priced at only about $15, $17. It's not, not too bad. Now, this next one got a big-time uh, notoriety, notoriety buzz uh, just recently. It's Popcorn Sutton's Tennessee White Whiskey, bottled at 93 proof. And Popcorn Sutton got a big time notoriety when uh, the Discovery Channel ran the Moonshiner series. Uh, he was featured in it, and he's one of the last original old time uh, style Moonshiners. Unfortunately, he passed away, uh, but and his shine was always known as being top notch, best stuff. So uh, he supposedly gave his recipe to a young guy who took it on and tries to make it in the same way he did, and. You know, when you start reading up on it, it's like, um, you don't know who to believe because uh, supposedly the very first spirits they had to kind of like contract out to Corsair distilleries in Tennessee and they were uh, making the spirit for them. And now they have their own plant called Popcorn Sentence Distillery, supposedly in Nashville. And either way, um, it is really, really tasty stuff. On the nose, I have it uh, listed as sweet corn. And I remember when I was smelling it, I was trying to figure out, what is that? I know that taste, that smell it is. And I thought, bang, I know what it is. It's candy corn. When you smell this, if you get a chance to smell popcorn suttons, think candy corn. And you're going to laugh, you know. That's exactly what it is. As far as the taste, uh, smooth, big fresh corn, just enough sweetness and some cooked oats on the finish. So really, really good stuff. Think cream of wheat oatmeal type thing. Very, very nice. Uh, this one, the original Moonshine Clear Corn Whiskey, 100% uh, corn in the mash bill. Uh, it actually comes out at 80 proof. It is distilled four times in charcoal filter. Uh, so you're starting to get almost into a vodka territory when you're distilling it that many times and charcoal filtering it. There's a very fine line you have to walk there between making it too smooth and knocking out too much of the corn and then leaving it you know, a little too hot and harsh as some of the, some of the others can be. Uh, the nose is sweet corn, some vanilla, and dark fruits. The taste is smooth, semi-sweet corn. Matter of fact, it was the smoothest of all these, was uh, the original Moonshine. Uh, clean, but some alcohol accompanies the corn throughout the finish. 
Um, not too bad. Unfortunately, it's kind of high price. It's around $40, so I don't know if it's really worth that. As a matter of fact, I'd probably recommend, you know, the Midnight Moon at 20 over this one, just because they're almost equally as smooth, um, but it'll save you some money. At the very end there, we have the uh, Woodenville uh, Barrel Strength White Dog. That's coming out at 110 proof, and it's uh, coming out of Washington State. And it's part of this Adrian Whiskey Kit that I have right back here. Um, the unique thing on this one is that the grain is corn, wheat, and malted barley. On the nose, I have it as semi-sweet corn uh, with some malt and some spice through a very long finish. Okay. Uh, actually, the taste is fresh corn, vanilla, oatmeal, some white pepper spice, and the heat starts to build up at the mid-palate and builds towards the finish. That's kind of unusual, you know, unlike the uh, buffalo trace that tend to come on really spicy in the beginning and then kind of taper around. Uh, this one actually uh, comes on kind of mild and then it crescendos all the way through this big finish. Uh, again, you know, the Adrian Whiskey Kit. It's pretty interesting. comes with two Glencairn style glasses, uh, a couple of 750 milliliter uh, white dog bottles, one two liter uh, charred oak barrel. And the good thing about this kit, it also has a little funnel. But the good thing about it is, once I pour these little two little 750s in there and I age them, they say it only takes about 30 to 60 days to really get good color, good flavor into them. Um, the thing that also makes it worth it is that once I'm done aging that spirit and I empty it out, I can refill this thing two or three more times and still get pretty good results. I think they say you can refill it like five or six. Uh, realistically, probably three, maybe four you'll get out of it. Uh, but if I wanted to take some uh, Junior Johnson's uh, Midnight Moon here and fill it up on batch number two and see how that ages, I'll be interested to see how that works. Uh, I might want to take one of my young scotches and throw it in there and just kind of see what that does. You know, just a good little fun little kid. Uh, again, in price anywhere between 120 and 150. Uh, it's just something to really try. And if you're really interested in seeing how whiskey ages, I definitely recommend it. So that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching my uh, YouTube videos. Everybody have a good evening and good night. Cheers.